My name is Ian Millam, and I'm the creative director on Battlefield Hardline. What were your goals heading into this new game? Well, twofold. Number one, we want to make a Battlefield game that's worthy of the name, right? We know that people are going to see this and be like, wait a second. EA, did you just have some like bank robbery game and you throw the Battlefield name on it because you're going to sell a bunch more? So it's important that we get the Battlefield stuff exactly right, right? It needs to deliver on all the Battlefield tenants. But Battlefield already exists. No one wants the exact same game again. So we want to also innovate. We think by bringing it to this new world and adding a bunch of features and adding a bunch of stuff to it and bringing it to this Cops and Robbers fantasy, we can really do that. Can you talk, elaborate on the Cops and Robbers fantasy and how that differentiates itself from the soldier fantasy? Sure. I mean, a lot of it has to do with the game modes, the map locations, and the gadgets, right? So we're doing all new game modes, more game modes than uh, more new game modes than Battlefield's ever had before, centered around the kind of things that I want to do if I'm a cop or a criminal, the kind of, and the weapons that I want to use. I want to use a taser. I want to use a baseball bat. I want to use a sawed-off shotgun. In addition to the huge weapon variety that already comes with Battlefield, and then when I'm talking about the kind of things that we want to do in our game modes, it's rob banks, get in high-speed chases, hostage situations, whatever. Like, there's all kinds of possibilities that we could do that we're evaluating for our game modes. Can you walk us through some of the different uh, weapons and vehicles on both sides of the law? Sure. Well, one of the big things we're doing here is Battlefield is known for its weapons and, and its vehicles. Both are hugely important. It's not just a run-and-gun game. It's a game where you can support your teammates in a bunch of different ways. So we've made a lot of innovations uh, in terms of how the classes play and the gadgets that we use, things like the grappling hook and the zip line that can be used both by you and all your teammates to get to areas, including between like 40-story buildings and everything like that. And then on the vehicle side, one of the big things we're bringing is speed, especially on the ground. This isn't a game with lots of sort of slow, lumbering vehicles that kind of go from one thing to the other. We're going fast motorcycles, sedans, all that kind of stuff. And the, also the ability for the passengers to really contribute. You can sit on the windowsill, fire 360 from your cars, and do a bunch of stuff like that. What are the different ways people are playing when it's the law versus the criminal side of the equation? Well, it depends a lot on the mode in terms of what, how they're playing. So in some cases, it's relatively symmetrical. Both sides have similar goals. Like, let's say uh, an armored car crashes and it spills its load all over the ground and there's ca a big pile of cash there. So now both sides need to grab it and try to secure it. And they also have their own vaults that they're trying to protect at the same time. Other times, it's more asymmetrical where in that case, like there's like a bank or some place that the police need to defend and it's the criminals trying to get in. And if they do get in, then it becomes where the criminals are trying to get that money away. It becomes more like a chase where the cops are trying to track that down. Can you give us a sense of these maps you guys are building out and the interactivity built within those uh, multi-levels with the garages and the skyscrapers? Sure. Well, one of the key areas that Battlefield really excels in and we need to make sure and deliver on are these incredibly huge maps with a lot of tactical variety, destruction, and all that kind of stuff. So it's not just this uh, sort of static hallway filled thing that's arted to look like a city. It needs to be like a real city. So from the parking garages to the top of the buildings, you can experience all of it. And we have both the, the helicopters and the vehicles to take advantage of all that to really give people the tactical variety that Battlefield's known for. Can you walk us through the actual maps you guys are showing here? Sure, the map we're showing right now is high tension. It is several blocks of downtown LA, recreated to exact detail. We spent a lot of time here, sort of going over every manhole cover and parking space and building, trying to get the maximum play variety and authenticity. Because this is a game that takes place in the real world, not sort of a fantasy thing. And it's really important that we get those details right, and I'm super excited with how it turned out. Can you talk a little bit about how your guys' background and working on the DLC within Battlefield kind of prepared you for jumping into Hardline? Sure. So anybody who knows Visceral Games history knows that single player is near and dear to our heart. And we, and we had a real angle about what we wanted to do with that. And we'd done some multiplayer before, but doing even better and continuing the legacy of one of the best multiplayer games in the world is not something we take lightly. So we've been spending a very long time at this. We were working with DICE from the first moment. One of the things we did is started to help contribute to Battlefield 3 and 4. We worked on the end game expansion pack. We did some stuff in the main game, really trying to learn from the best and work alongside them to deliver uh, multiplayer at that level before we took the leadership position on the project that we're doing here, Hardline. And then also some of them are still working with us and helping us out and contributing because they wanted to. They thought it was really cool. So DICE is still a partner in what we're doing now.